So welcome back. So now we got a, a huge website scaffolded for us here. The entire person status crotch setup is actually ready for us. So I can go into persons, the route here just to see all my persons available. And I can also go in and delete, edit and see the details of a specific person. And I can even create a new person if I want to. And all of that was built automatically by using the scaffolding tool inside Visual Studio. That's awesome. But what did we actually get when we did this scaffolded solution? Let me just give you an overview of that. So when I asked the tool to actually scaffold the controller for me, what did I get? Well, first of all, I got the controller, of course. This person status controller, that's the one we changed in last time. That's where we went in and said, we do not want to use the context directly. We actually want to use a manager to pull out our, and store our data instead. So that was inside the controller. And what did we actually get here? Well, of course, we got all the required functions for making a controller for the CRUD setup. We got a read all here with the index page. We got a details page here. If we scroll down, we got a create page, both for the pulling out the page for the actual creation and also for calling the system to actually do the creation behind the scenes. We got the edit one again for showing a page and the edit one for posting the information inside the page. We got delete one again for showing, do you want to delete, yes, no, and then also for actually doing the deletion. So all of that was created for us. And they added some extra functionalities here, like the anti-forgery token, us uh, validate anti-forgery token. That's, that token, I don't want to go into details, but it's like a validation token between the client and the server, so we know that the client is actually who he says he is. So that's just a very high level um, set up for that. You also got things like the bind here. Now the bind is a cool thing, because you can actually say, when we did the model binding earlier, you can actually say, I do, I only want to accept binding to an ID and name. I, if you put any other properties from the client, I don't care. I'll just ignore them. I'll only accept the ID and the name. And that's, of course, to guard ourselves from people who just send a gazillion properties against us. Um, we'll just say, well, ignore all of them except the twos that we do want in our application. So we can kind of guard ourselves here to only get some specific um, properties for our application and in this case since it's the person status I just want an ID and name that's all I want to be passed in as the edit part so that you also got that out of the box the the binding um, capabilities so what else do we have well here we also had it, another thing you can view here we have the post request of course but we also added the action name here to say that instead of delete confirmed we actually just want the slash to be slash delete slash five because if we did not have this action name you would actually have to write it like this oh i can't put that in there but the delete confirm would actually be what you would have to say up here but because we put in the action name we can decide what this line right here should say in the url that's that's how we use the action name i talked about that earlier as well so all of that was created for you so the controller that makes sense what else did we get well it also created a view for each of those different areas inside the controller. So we have a create view, a delete view, an edit view, and an index view. They are all available and even a details view. They are all available for you now to use. Now the views are a bit different than the ones we created the first time because here we made pure HTML. This is the person view that we built together earlier and notice I have pure HTML in here and then a few razor lines here and there but it's kind of pure HTML all the way through. But now in the new way, let's go into the index page, we're actually starting to use something called HTML helpers. And that's what I'm going to focus on in the next few lessons, just to show you a few of these helpers. But just an overall um, understanding of helpers is pretty much just, you write some C-sharp code where you can get IntelliSense and auto-completion. Like here, if I try to say, I wanna put something in here, it can help me out and say, there's a create, a delete, a details, an edit, and an index action inside the controller you can attack. I'll explain these to you soon, but you can get some intelligence, that's just my point. And then what will happen on compile time, Razor, or whenever you do a request, Razor will actually take this and convert it into actual HTML that you can use. So for this action link right here, on the index page, on this person status, let's have a look at that. Instead of an action link, um, like you just saw as, an, as a helper, you'll actually end up getting something looking like this. And let's just, what I'm trying to do is just trying to show you in the developer tools what this actually looks like. So let me just try and open the developer tools since my shortcut wouldn't work. Um, you can click here and you can click on the actual guy up here and you'll see what you have. It's actually a link, let me, let me just zoom, 
So it converted the code you see right here, HTML helper, action link, da 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 da, converted that into an actual A tag with an href to this uh, line right here and with the text inside the, the actual A tag. So let's run over some of these HTML helpers, but all in all, an HTML helper is pretty much just a way to write C sharp code that will be converted into HTML. Let's look more into that.